So, the main villain of the Batman is the Riddler, a character who's always honestly been one of my favorite Batman antagonists. I mean, in the comics, he's this guy that thinks he's so smart that he leaves Batman a bunch of puzzles to solve in order to lead him right to the crime scene. It's like the nerdiest attempt at a Chad move ever. Which is why I was so excited to see him here in this movie, reimagined as a terrifying masked serial murderer, a nightmarish Zodiac killer for the Instagram age, driven by the single-minded goal of getting people to watch his internet videos about the D deep lore of Gotham City. Oh no. Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that encourages you to pull in Adam West and punch that subscribe button so hard it says OOF! Your glasses! Remember. Never hit a man with glasses. Well friends, hot on the heels of the huge success that was Batman v Superman. Well, it looks like it took some time, but the Batman is finally set to take flight here in 2018. 2019. Right in time for the summer blockbuster for Halloween. For the top of 2022, we finally have the release of the Ben Affleck directed, Matt Reeves directed Batman movie. Whew, starring Ben Affleck. Oh, come on! Yes, friends, we finally have ourselves a new standalone Batman movie. The latest feature film adaptation of the only character in the DC Comics universe that Warner Brothers is apparently aware exists. I mean, I would make the joke myself, but it looks like they've already done it for me. Coming this summer. They're finally going to make a movie about me! Alfred, the movie. The real punchline here is that by the time that joke made it to theaters, WB had actually greenlit an Alfred show. My movie must be slated for next summer. Coming next summer, it's The Car. No, oh, they did The Car before you, bro. And now they're doing that one too. What's up, DC Kids fandom? I'm really excited to give you a little sneak peek into the new show, Batwheels. Even the upcoming Flash movie is apparently a Batman movie. Okay, so maybe the world's a bit saturated with Batman content these days, which kind of makes it ironic that today I don't want to talk about the movie that we got, instead I want to talk about the movie that we're gonna get. You see, since the release of the film, the internet's been buzzing with headlines all about the big Joker tease that happens at the end of this movie, uh, just to recap where we leave things off. As the Batman concludes, Riddler, aka Edward Nashton, turns out to basically be a dorky Batman fanboy, who thought that he was helping the crime-fighting mission with his clues, and honestly Batman needs all the help he can get considering he manages to thwart about, like, let's say one-third of the Riddler's big evil scheme. Sure, just about every specific person that Riddler sets out to kill gets killed, and Gotham City is flooded just like he planned, but uh, I, I guess Batman managed to stop, like, most of an attack at a big political event, so yay? Along the way, he learns that in order to truly make Gotham better, he's gonna need to check his privilege, brush up on his Spanish, and recalibrate his branding a bit considering that one of the gunmen in the finale repeats his I'm vengeance catch for is back to him. It's a good thing that he had already caught the Riddler at that point, because it sounds like he's gonna need a me day to process that one. Speaking of catching the Riddler, he gets one last scene moping in his cell in Arkham Asylum, and it's here that we finally come to the conversation that everyone's been talking about, and the one that I want to focus on for today's episode. Since we obviously don't have footage from the new movie, let me just set the scene. A barren cell, tinted red. Redder? Redder? No, no, really, I mean real red. Pretend like ketchup got smeared across the film reel or something. Yeah, there it is, perfect. Riddler sad and confused, paces in his room. Suddenly, a voice from the next cell over says, What is it they say? One day you're on top, and the next you're a clown. Well, let me tell you, there are worse things than being a... Hey, 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 don't be sad. You did so well. And you know Gotham loves a comeback story. Who are you? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Riddle me this. The less of them you have, the more one is worth. A friend. And then they both laugh, but not like normal laughs. They both sound like two teenage boys swapping Fortnite memes on the playground. And scene. Now, we don't get a good look at who this person is. The actor is Barry Keoghan, and he's credited only as unseen Arkham inmates, but his face appears to be somehow disfigured. So, between the high-pitched prepubescent laughter, the clown references, and the scars, Clearly everyone is immediately thinking that this guy is the Joker. And it certainly makes sense. He is the top Batman villain. Every version of this property is always in a rush to get him in there. And there have been rumors
rumors that Kyogen's undisclosed role would specifically be a version of the Joker. And yet, I I'm not so sure. Uh, Matt? It feels almost too easy, too predictable. Matt, Matt? Shh, not right now, I'm trying to record. You're already a movie studio fighting the perception that it keeps repeating itself. Why would you make your big build up something that everyone was so sure that they could see coming? And at the same time, why would you take such a huge risk? Any casting of the Joker immediately gets compared to Heath Ledger's iconic portrayal in The Dark Knight. And that's just not a comparison that many actors are able to win. A bad Joker too early in your series can really kill off your chances before you even get a chance to spread your wings. Isn't that right, Jared Leto? Really, Bruce? Honor? We live in a society. Like I said, hunka, hunka. that's why I believe the Batman is actually pulling the wool over our eyes. They're misdirecting us. They're setting up a different Batman arch nemesis. One that would work a lot better for the world that this film's created. A guy named Hush. Matt! Seriously, what? I am trying to record. Yes, hi, hello, head editor Dan here. You really might want to see this. One of the lines from the scene that's not in is that unseen prisoner says to him, he says, it's almost our anniversary, isn't it? And that character, who is the character that you think he is? Wait, so he's the character I think he is? Did they already just confirm my hush theory? No, 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 Matt. You're missing the point here. The reason that Joker's in the movie is Batman is so unnerved because the Riddler is writing to him. And so he goes to see another killer that he's clearly had an experience with. And this killer in this story is not yet the character that we come to know. And so here we have a Joker who's not yet the Joker. Oh. Yeah. Wait, when did this come out? March 4th? That is literally the day that the movie released. They leave in a bunch of theory fodder, trademarked, only to reveal the answer the same day. But but I I, I just finished the script. I, I just got into the recording booth. I know, buddy. I know, it hurts. Life has been a cruel joke on him, and he's eventually going to become declare himself as a clown, declare himself as the Joker. Oh, be quiet, Matt Reeves. I get it. You've done enough damage. Well, there's a new salad, Fingers. You want to talk about that? He should be hush. Wait, what? He should be hush. Yeah, that's it. They're all wrong. The director is wrong about his own movie. All of them. The director, the studio, everyone is wrong to insert the Joker into this world. This character should be hush. It would work better. It would make more sense. Heck, the Easter eggs are already there in the movie, so as long as you scrub all these director interviews from the world, you have something that could really work. You're really going through with this. Uh, going through with what, Dan? making the movie better, making these business decisions over at WB and DC make sense? Yeah, yeah I am. Now stand aside, my friend. I got a theory to record. All right, good luck. Oh boy. Created by Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee in 2002, Hush is, it's, it's a little bit complicated. Have you noticed that most major Batman villains are directly commenting on the Batman in some way? Two-Face is a guy with two personas, like someone who's rich during the day and a bat vigilante at night. The Penguin is a low-life criminal who cosplays as a rich aristocrat, a direct commentary on the billionaire who hunts him down. Batman is a man pretending to be a bat, but what happens when you have a bat pretending to be a man? Man bat. Look, not all of them need an elaborate explanation. But whereas all these other villains are commentaries on Batman, Hush is the villain that's basically the evil version of Bruce Wayne. In the original Hush storyline, a boy named Thomas Elliot grows up as Bruce's childhood friend. But whereas Bruce Wayne became Batman following the tragic murder of his loving parents, Elliot's parents were abusive and neglectful, and his origin begins by attempting to engineer their deaths in an accident so he can inherit the fortune. But when the moment finally comes, Elliot only manages to kill his father. His mother's life is actually saved by Thomas Wayne, thwarting his plan for inheritance, driving him further into madness, and leaving him with a permanent grudge against the Wayne family. From that starting point, Thomas Elliot grows up to become a brilliant surgeon with a chip on his shoulder. During the 11-issue storyline, he learns that Bruce Wayne is Batman, and he becomes obsessed with tearing him down. To do this, he manipulates all almost everyone, including Joker, Poison Ivy, Killer Croc, even Superman, as a part of his elaborate scheme. And here's the kicker. The reason he knows the Bruce-Batman connection? Hush's secret partner figures it out. The one smart enough to put it all together, the Riddler. They team up, they're friends, just like we see them becoming friends in Arkham at the end of the Batman. That's it? They shared a storyline and worked together one time? That's your big evidence? No. No, that's not it. Obviously, that would be way too big of a leap. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but 
it. Have you seen these channels? I'm gonna choose to ignore that. In this new movie, the Riddler's grudge against the Waynes started when he was a kid living in an orphanage set to be funded by a Wayne family charity initiative. One that then lost funding when the Waynes got killed, right? Well, the Riddler has himself a theory. A conspiracy theory! That their death wasn't a random act of violence. In a rambling explainer video, he tries to prove that Thomas Wayne, while running for mayor of Gotham, asked for a hit on a tabloid journalist that was set to do an expose about his wife Martha being treated for mental illness at Arkham. When the deal goes south, the Waynes get killed. But what's important here are the images that flash across the screen. The journalist who supposedly gets killed is named Edward Elliot. And then we see the word hush scrawled across the TV screen. Elliot, hush, they're trying to tell us something. It's an Easter egg. Sure, it's pretty explicit. But what is it that our scarred friend says in his dialogue at the end of the new movie? Everyone loves a comeback story. That line, it doesn't really make a lot of sense if we assume that this is the Joker. Oh no, he was caught off screen in Batman's first year in a movie that never got made and now he's back in the sequel? Sure, I guess, but what if this guy was thought to be dead and is looking to surprise everyone with his return? Now the line really fits. Edward Elliot. Or better yet, what if it's Edward Elliot's son coming back? Thomas, another child who's made an orphan thanks to the corruption of Gotham. But unlike Bruce, who grows up and internalizes that to become a force for good, this kid grows up to take a different path, one of spreading fear and murder. That comeback line also makes a lot of sense with Hush's history. He himself is a comeback story from Bruce and his childhood spent together. And his big plot to take down Batman in the comics revolves around making it seem like Jason Todd has come back from the dead. Everyone loves a comeback story. I mean, sure, but the director said. But beyond the Riddler connection and the Easter eggs hidden in the film, Hush makes the most sense to use for this version of Batman. This Batman is a detective. He walks around slowly. He monologues about his thoughts slowly. He solves mysteries slowly. And Hush is very much a crime noir villain. Someone manipulating things from the shadows, pulling the strings. He tends to work best in any story where elaborate conspiracies are afoot, or people are digging into the not-so-pure pasts of Thomas and Martha Wayne, just like the Riddler is doing here in this first movie. Hush comes from comic storylines like Batman, R.I.P., and Heart of Hush, where villains dig into the old dark rumors of the Wayne family's connections to things like drug scandals, and the accusations that Alfred is Bruce's biological father. Thematically, too, Thomas Elliot just makes more sense. The Batman's version of Bruce Wayne is not a perfect guy who's figured out his entire mission yet. He essentially gets dressed down to his face by Catwoman about how it's actually guys like Bruce Wayne who are the problem in places like Gotham. And in that context, a villain like Thomas Elliot is Hush, someone from Bruce Wayne's world who's living the same kind of double life but with the mirror opposite values and mission, would be the perfect way to continue driving that point home. You done? Speaking of Selina Kyle, Hush kidnaps her, then surgically removes her heart and holds it hostage in a story arc. So, you know, in this new film universe, he would have her hanging out and available for that. That one's kinda weird, not gonna lie. But also look at the casting and design of this guy. Well, Barry Keoghan's disfigured Joker face is meant to be a birth defect that forces his version of the character into a permanent smile. He's got this congenital disease, he can never stop smiling. What if this is something that he's been touched by from birth, and he's had this very dark reaction to it, and he knows how to get into your head. We know from the comics that Hush's face is constantly wrapped in bandages, like some sort of invisible man cosplay. He does this to hide the fact that he's done surgery on his own face. So if they wanted Barry to suddenly not be the Joker, you could just say, oh yeah, these are bad plastic surgery scars. Also, it's worth mentioning that Thomas Elliot does surgery on his own face to become Bruce Wayne. He literally changes his face to become a doppelganger for Bruce. In a film universe where Bruce is a recluse and hiding inside the Batman cowl for like 95% of the runtime, it leaves the door open for Hush to take on Bruce's identity out in the daylight to cause some havoc, at which point the real Bruce needs to deal with his and his family's demons to realize that, hey, being a privileged rich kid comes with responsibilities that you can't just dress up and punch through to avoid. In fact, that movie would force Bruce to realize that Bruce Wayne, based on all his money and privilege, probably has more changing power than Batman ever did with his fists. Okay, that's kind of cool. I recognize that I pay you to say that, but I appreciate you doing it anyway. We also need to consider age here. Joker in most media is meant to be older than Batman by about 10 years, whereas Hush is meant to be Batman's contemporary. They grew up together as childhood frenemies. At 29, Barry Keoghan is a good bit younger than 35-year-old Robert Pattinson's Batman. That age gap could certainly work with a Hush dynamic, but it would definitely be a bit unusual to see it played out in the form of Joker. And lastly, during the end credits of this new movie, you're hinted to go to a website, www.ratalata, the winged rat, which is meant to be the Riddler's site. It's actually been kicking around since the movie's early trailers, but now it's constantly being updated with new Riddler files so you can dig around inside his conspiracy. Lots of them are just really cool assets from the movie. You get close 
close-up shots of Riddler's sanctuary, some of the surveillance photos that he took of the corrupt elite, Martha Wayne being treated at Arkham, and of course, plenty of ciphers to solve for when you finished your daily dose of Wordle. I got it in for today. Five, thanks for rubbing it in. Anyway, this file is super cool, and I highly recommend that everyone watching check it out, but there are two files in the zip drive that I wanted to call out specifically. First, in picture 01, we get a man missing a face wrapped in bandages. That could be his victims just wrapped up in duct tape. Agreed, but I just wanted to point it out. What's much more interesting, though, is Riddler's journal. It's a nine-page PDF where we see his descent into madness. It starts with him suspecting that something's wrong in the city. He's frustrated by the elite sitting on their thrones, and he's determined to find the corruption that exists under the surface. By the end, though, he's filling the pages with line after line of renewal. I know what I must become, and no escape. Just page after page after page of rambling and scribbling. Looking at it, it was suspicious to me that they included so much of this, so I decided to look closer. And when you do, you can start to make out some shapes. Things that kind of look like the shape of eyeballs. So I darken the image, and you clearly get faces. Two strong points for Batman's ears, his glaring eyes, and someone lurking behind him. Is it just the Riddler? Sure, maybe. Probably. But I like to think that this whole rabbit hole of an ARG is hinting at what's coming next, and that face, to me, is very similar to what we see of Hush. Legitimately, that's pretty cool, regardless of whether it's Hush or not. Here's the TLDR. Do I think that Barry Keoghan is likely meant to be the Joker? Yes. He is. Again, that was outright confirmed. But I hope that he isn't. Batman's rogues gallery is stacked with amazing characters that were all built to reveal interesting facets of the character. I get why everyone is in such a rush to pull out a Joker, but guess what? Story matters more. The Dark Knight worked not just because the Joker was in it, but because the team making the movie understood why the Joker was in it. And spoiler alert, the answer wasn't just to sell tickets. Don't get me wrong, I love the character. I thought the new Joker movie was great, but we see him all the time. Batman has 26 animated films and Joker makes an appearance in at least 16 of them. That's 61%. In live action movies, we've seen the Joker five times in the last 30 years. On TV, Gotham gave us like three people who weren't technically the Joker, but were obviously kind of the Joker. I'm just excited to see something different with these characters. And this new Batman movie started to give me it. And I want that to continue. When I look at the world of this new movie, Hush feels like a perfect fit. There's comic lore connecting him to the Riddler. The Easter eggs that have already been laid out for Mr. J could just as easily transplant over onto Thomas Elliot, a scarred Bruce Wayne doppelganger. And honestly, I think the story potential there is just as strong, if not stronger. In the end, my point is that I love all these characters. And sometimes by seeing less of one, it allows us to see more of all of them. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Um, so, I just leave, right? Matt didn't really say goodbye, so I just kind of stayed for the end card. Um, oh, end card. Uh, uh, well, I guess you can click this video here. That'll that'll take you to another theory. Or there's this one right here. You, you can click that one as well. That'd be neat. Uh, subscribe, you know, helps us keep our jobs. I guess I will see my way out.